Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Power Ideas. Today's episode is going to be dedicated to my friend Alex. He came up with a pretty good idea. I party chatted with him for quite a while about it, helped him with a couple of points, but ultimately the idea is his. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now I'm actually going to make this video a two-parter. I'm going to start out with the conduits themselves, and then in the next episode, I'm going to go over the backstory. The backstory is something I think we could actually make our own infamous game out of, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So our conduits, that's right, plural, are a boy and girl tag team who have been together since childhood. They're not romantically involved, and even though their relationship is sibling-like, they are not blood-related. The boy's name is Nikolai Molotok, and the girl's name is Lucy Skorost Molny. Do not ask me about those names, Alex came up with them himself. Nikolai's power is Molten Steel, or Molten Metal as Alex likes to call it, because not all of the metal he uses is steel particularly, so he likes to call it metal since it's more wide variety, but I think Molten Steel sounds cooler. Lucy's power is electricity, more specifically static electricity because it's not an exact copy of Cole's powers. Which, by the way, before you start complaining that we're ripping off coal, may I remind you that there are a lot of people in the comments who are begging for electricity to come back. This is about as close as you're going to get to that without bringing coal back from the dead. And don't even think about it. Alright, let's start with Nikolai's powers first. His bolt has him shooting gold and silver coins from his fingers. The animation looks like Genji when he throws his ninja stars in Overwatch. The coins are magnetized and spin around each other as they travel. His melee is a hammer that is about the size of a normal sledgehammer. The speed at which he uses it is slightly slower than that of the neon melee speed from Second Sun. It has two functions. One, pressing square allows him to swing it from side to side, and two, holding square allows him to slam the hammer on the ground, causing a tiny earthquake which magnetizes chunks of metal up from the ground. His melee finisher is him doing a home run animation, where he pulls the hammer back and swings it at the enemy, sending him flying through the air. The grenade is an impact grenade that bubbles and melts on impact, obviously. An upgrade will increase the area of effect, and the final upgrade allows the grenade to cause an explosion before melting, which sends shrapnel into the air. His rocket is initially a large rock that splits into two chunks, and they spin around each other as they travel. On impact, the metal turns molten and splashes on other enemies, solidifies the enemies, and then blows up. Nikolai does not have a dash. Instead, he utilizes Cole's dodge roll abilities and can spawn metal shields from the ground by holding circle. The animation has him pointing his hand at the ground, then he brings his hand upwards, causing the shield to pop out of the ground in front of him. The shield is vertical, and he can shoot around it. The Surrender Execute has him placing his hand on the enemy's head, encasing them in metal. He then slams the hammer on the enemy's head, and smashes them to pieces. The Ground Execute is Nikolai swinging his hammer like a golf club. When the hammer hits the enemy, it sends them flying into the air, but encases them in metal at the same time. In mid-air, the enemy will then shatter into tiny chunks of metal. The Surrender Subdue animation has him encasing the enemy in hot molten metal from the feet all the way up to the chest area. This metal then solidifies, cools, and encases the enemy, keeping them in place. The Ground Subdue animation has a similar effect. The enemy is lying on the ground, and Nikolai encases their upper torso from about the neck area all the way down to the lower waist in the same kind of metal that solidifies and then keeps the enemy subdued. His Karma Bomb features him holding the hammer upside down. He jumps up into the air and slams the head of the hammer down, creating a massive crevice in the ground. The hammer summons up all of this molten magma and metal that bubbles through the ground. Giant metal spikes come up all around the area of effect, impaling objects and destroying everything. At the end of the animation, all the molten magma solidifies and enemies are encased in hard metal. You can run up to the enemies and smash them using your hammer afterwards, just for a bit of fun. Alright, now let's talk about Lucy's powers. I'm sure this is what you're all excited for anyway. She has two separate bolts. Her long-range bolt looks like a needle or icicle, except it's electricity, of course, and she fires in three-round bursts. Her short-range bolt is used only after the dash and acts as a scatter blast and looks similar to the scythe bolt from Infamous 2. Her rocket is a lightning artillery strike. 
She shoots a cluster of electricity into the sky. This cluster then breaks apart and comes back down very fast and very hard on her enemies. Her grenade is a static electricity grenade that arcs to nearby enemies and objects. An upgrade to the grenade adds an EMP effect that disables enemy equipment. Her dash looks like the Iceman dash from Infamous 2, except with electricity instead of ice, of course. The dash takedown has her grabbing an enemy by the head flipping over the enemy and then slamming them into the ground. The Thunder Drop has two functions. One, if you're dropping directly on top of an enemy, she grabs the enemy's head, flips over the enemy, and then slams him into the ground. And this causes the normal Thunder Drop animation, you know, area of effect, radial power, you know what it looks like. The second effect is, if she's not dropping directly on top of someone, when she hits the ground, it causes an EMP effect, disabling enemy equipment. Her melee weapon is a set of dual batons that are electrified, so basically like Nightwing's Eskrima sticks. Her healing animation features her getting down on one knee, putting one hand behind the civilian's neck and the other hand on the civilian's heart, and then quickly resuscitating them that way. Her execution looks like the ground zap ability that Raiden has from MKX. I don't remember what it's called. I'll put some gameplay on screen so you can see what it looks like here. And her subdue is a set of electric chains that look similar to this animation from the Tempest in Black Ops 3. Her surrender execute has her placing fingers on the temples of the enemy and zapping his brain until he basically goes brain dead. The enemy then disintegrates into ashes. Her karma bomb features her drawing massive amounts of power from the city itself. She absorbs a lot of electricity and then creates a huge EMP explosion, blacking out a section of the city while also summoning a lightning storm. This lightning storm would strike all enemies in the area of effect. Alright, so I think now would be a good time to mention the fact that these two work together a lot. They are present in the same city at the same time, and you can actually swap back and forth between both of them. You can play as either character. Now when I say they are present in the same city, I don't mean that they are right next to each other 24-7. Just think something like GTA V. They're in the same city, and they're doing their own thing, and you can only play as one character at a time, but you can switch between them freely. There's also a gameplay mechanic where you can summon the the other character depending on who you're playing as and they will come and help you out. Kind of similar to Spider-Man Web of Shadows, how you could summon AI characters to help you fight for a short period of time. Similar to that. Which also reminds me, Nikolai does not have his own healing animation. If you want to heal somebody as Nikolai, he basically just summons Lucy and then she comes and heals the civilians for him. If you guys have any ideas for a healing animation for Molten Metal, feel free to leave it in the comments below, but uh, me and Alex couldn't come up with anything for that. And now this brings me to my final point, and that is that these characters actually have a duo karma bomb that is only available when they are present together. This karma bomb is called Clockwork. It features Lucy using her speed to bring a bunch of enemies into a giant circle. Then she brings Nikolai into the center of the circle and spins him around very fast while he holds out his hammer and knocks down all the enemies in the circle. So those are all the powers. Now I'm going to talk about appearance so you can really put all the pieces together and have fun picturing these two characters. Lucy wears a long sleeve shirt. The sleeves are pushed up to forearm length. The shirt is black on the sleeves and gray on the torso. In the center of the shirt, there is a lightning bolt in the shape of a sickle, and over her shirt she wears a sleeveless leather jacket. The inside lining of the jacket is thick fur, either white tiger or cheetah fur. I prefer white tiger because I think it looks more badass, Alex prefers cheetah, you can voice off on that in the comments. This fur can be seen around the shoulders and zipper parts of the jacket, so try to imagine that the sleeves of this jacket were cut off and the area where you stick your arm through has a bunch of fur kind of sticking out that you can see. There's also a hood on the jacket, and this fur lining goes around the face of the hood so it'll keep her warm when she wears it, but she usually keeps the hood down. Her pants are dark green camo or militaristic cargo pants, and her shoes are just normal running shoes since she's supposed to be fast. She also has dyed hair. Most of her hair is brown, but the tips are red along with a single red stripe down the front, kind of like this picture you see right now, except obviously red instead of blue. 
Nikolai is a pretty muscular guy. He's not huge, he isn't a bodybuilder, but when you see him, he's definitely a little bit intimidating. He wears what I would call a standard work jacket, something that looks like this picture on screen right now. Not the guy, just the jacket that he's wearing. He also sports a pair of normal cargo pants, and I would say probably a pair of steel-toed boots, since of course his power is molten steel, or metal if you're going to be particular. And if I remember correctly, Alex said that he was bald. Um, I'll ask Alex for a picture so I can put that on screen here, but I don't know off the top of my head what he looks like, so hopefully the pictures display that good enough. But anyway, that does it for this idea. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I did Alex's idea justice. If not, I'm sure I'll hear some complaints in the comments down below. Tell me what you guys think. Do you like these characters? Also, stay tuned for the next episode because I've still got some backstory to cover about these guys, and that backstory might just create an idea for a whole new infamous game. As always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this, and I will catch you all later.